Showtime Shaw Porter here in Australia, Vasily Lomachenko, George Kambosis, an amazing uh, face off there as well. <laughs> Another long one yeah. uh, and a big couple of days ahead, huh? Those guys are immature, man. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> have you had any? Do you ever have a face off like that? No, um, I've had some intense ones, not, yeah. not crazy intense. I think uh, the other week we saw, uh, we saw Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney face off. And that was one of the most intense face-offs I've ever seen, mm. uh, personally. Um, but you know that right there is, you're mature, man. Just, <laughs> just, just walk, just turn around and walk off the stage. Just you get know? it happening. Yeah. Look, obviously a win's gonna be very important for both of these fighters. But let's talk about the loss. What happens to either George Kambosos or Vasily Vasily Lomachenko without a win? Yeah, you know what? The one thing we we ha we haven't really talked about as it pertains to the guy who who loses mm. is. What, what I always like to say, it's not, and, and I, this came from experience, it's not about losing, it's about how you lose. If these guys come in here and put on a fantastic performance, a lot like Haney and oh, Lomachenko, yeah, I mean, that was a razor thin decision, could have went either way. When the fight first ended, I had it going Lomachenko's way, and I said, you know what, the business, this is gonna go Haney's way. And, I, and then legitimately felt like Haney won the fight. Same thing could happen here, man. And when those kind of fights happen, and you feel like you've gotten everything that you wanted as a fan, you want to see the winner and the loser again, you know. Yeah. So, but realistically, because let's now we got to talk about the business. Realistically, whoever loses this fight, Lomachenko, if he loses, we got to talk about hey, how many more fights is he even gonna have? Um, I really don't see him fighting much longer anyway, but we'll see. And then for uh, for Cambosis, I mean, bottom line is he can always be a star here in Cam in, in in Australia. But he wants to be world class, so uh, he loses tomorrow. More than likely, he won't see world class again. Yeah, well, he definitely wants to float around that top spot. He loves the big fights. Obviously, he's put himself in that position multiple times, and yeah. I guess we'll soon see on Sunday. Speaking of uh, Aussies doing big fights, the one and only Tim Zhu up against Virgil Ortiz Jr. as well. Now, yeah. this is a fight, man. The 154s, is uh, it's, it's, it's heating up. It's good. It's a quick turnaround for for mm -hmm. uh, for. Um, for Zhu, I, I, I hope that he's he, he'll be healed up and, and ready for that one. I would hate to see a cut get in the way again, yeah, yeah. you know. So I, I hope that he's taking enough time. Um, August, yeah. so should should be good to go. Yeah. Um, and you, and you, now you got two lions, two young guys. Uh, we I, I think this fight's pretty evenly matched because I know a lot of people look at Virgil Ortiz as a threat to Tim Zhu. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, at this at that level. They're both threats to one another, but uh, the fact that he hasn't been very cons consistent and active in the course of like the last three or four years, even yeah. now at this point, um, I think that kind of, in some ways, evens the playing field for a Tim Zhu who could be coming into the ring with some soft scar tissue. Yeah, and obviously that. Speaking of people that don't want to lose, that would be Tim Zhu on that fight because that would be devastating for yeah. his career as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he has obviously called in the big guns, being his father Kostya Zhu. I don't know if you've seen that footage. I did. It's unreal, isn't it? Yeah. I'm getting the feels. I'm loving seeing it. Yeah. And uh, as someone who obviously trains with a father, yeah. Uh, to have not seen his father, I think maybe four years, to arrive in Thailand and. Uh, like they never skipped a beat. It's, that's beautiful. I didn't realize they were in Thailand. That makes it even better. Yeah. You know, uh, my dad and I, we've taken trips uh, around the world together that weren't about boxing. We weren't traveling to box. And, you know, to know that they met up on, in another country, you know what I mean? And we're just able to be father and son and work together and things of that nature is awesome. Me, again, coming from that father-son duel, uh, when I first came over here to the States, or excuse me, to, to Australia, and of course knowing who um, who Costa is, yeah. I'm like, where's Costa? I want to meet Costa, you know? <laughs> I want to meet Costa, you know, knowing that the, the relationship was a little estranged. Yeah. Just to see that is to me is beautiful, and I think that that, that is going to definitely level Tim up. Yeah, I love that uh, Costa has only saw his first professional fight since then, hasn't been back, so to get in his career at this time, oh, wow. that is a true story. It's been a now, long time. Yeah, and then the great thing is Costa gets in the car and goes, I think I've seen some things we need to work on, and yeah. he's straight back into it, straight yeah. back pushing the Costa Zoo spirit. That's beautiful, man. Um, yeah, that's sometimes what you need is you need you need that eye that, uh, that, that, that can see the things that other people don't see, yeah. you know? And usually, in my experience... When you have uh, a blood relation to someone, you know a little bit more than everybody else knows. You yeah. know, so I'm I'm really hope that Costa is able to. We also got to 
you gotta analyze that as well. It's Costa a coach. Yeah. It's Costa a teacher. Yeah. You know, a lot of times <laughs> the greats, they were great doing it, but they weren't great teaching it. You know what I mean? We've we've also seen the latter as well, but I'm hoping that uh, Costa is a great teacher. Should be good. And that 154, obviously, right for the picking now. You've got two belts with Sebastian Fundora, Murta Zalev, and uh, Madrimov have got the other two. Yeah. I can see some either unifying soon. Or even, do you think Errol Spence will get a crack at that division? Um, he's, he's definitely coming up to 154. Um, I, 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 my man, I, I, I love to see him in the ring ASAP. I don't know when, when ASAP is going to be. <laughs> but uh, I think once we see him in the ring, we see the way he's able to operate. Uh then we'll know whether or not he'll, he'll have a crack at the top. Mm. Well, Ryan Garcia has been stirring him up on Twitter. That's just that's just yeah. uh, hot. That's that's hot. Ryan does not mind the fire. Uh, yeah. I'm not him. Yeah. I don't like people saying negative things about me. But yeah. I mean, he. This is the world we live in now, where it's like the negative outshines the positive, and uh, he, he doesn't mind. Um, but you're calling out. That's a beast. That is a beast. That's a beast right there. Errol Spence is a beast. So. Yeah. Do you think he'll fight some Fundora? Do you reckon that's the, the next one? Uh, it could be the next one. I mean, they're both PBC guys. Uh, one point in time, I know Fundora wanted to even come down to 147 mm -hmm. to fight uh, Errol Spence. Um, I, you know, the thing now at this point, obviously, if the money's right, they'll make it happen. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah, well, uh, look, uh, Kermel Moton's another one I wanted to bring up with you as well. Obviously, a Las Vegas resident and a star of the future, right? I saw him fight. Obviously. Star, star of the future. What is he? Three and zero, four and zero now. Yeah, and just let's 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 let the kid get in the ring a couple <laughs> more times before we put put him on the spotlight. I'm just, yeah, I'm I've, awesome. I've known him since he's eight years old. Oh wow! Or seven, seven or eight years old. Did you see him? At so this that's level? the so that's the disclaimer. Okay. I have video of this kid at a at a national tournament. Yeah. On my on my phone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's great. Yeah. Well, let him get somewhere first. Yeah. You know what I mean. I have a I have a feeling when I see any footage of him and he looks so young on film yeah. that like that'll be film that lives in an archive later on. Absolutely. When you flow throw back to that footage Absolutely. and it's like, oh my god, this is when he was three and oh. Yep. yep. I've got that yep. feeling that like, young Floyd sort of Sean Porter oh, feeling. Yeah. Absolutely. Know? I mean, yeah, he can get there, and you know, again to that point, when I was three and oh, nobody knew who I was, yeah. and I, I don't take offense to that or anything, but the world of boxing that I come from. You have to literally pay your dues. Yeah. You have to work your way up, yeah. and you've got to get thousands of thousands of people to recognize you before yeah. boxing wants to give you a chance. Yeah. You know, so I just feel like you know, hey, he's cutting corners, and because he's got someone behind him, yes. I'm happy for that. But at the same time, what can we analyze? You've you've gone a distance like once in yeah. three and four fights. What can we analyze? I can analyze you because I saw you as an amateur, so yeah. I can talk about. You're amateur to the pros, but for everyone that sees him now, like you guys aren't gonna see anything to analyze for another probably three or four fights. Yeah, but you know, you've got it. You, you can see the future. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Future. He's got the ball. And and <laughs> it's like I always like to say, he loves it. Yeah. And when you yeah. love what you do, usually it's it's that's a hard combination to stop. Yeah. One final one for you. Sam Goodman's been eyeing off um, Noya in a way. Now this is someone that you have uh, had the opportunity to see. Yeah. Sam Goodman, you've got up with him obviously in a way as well. But Sam, you with your, all your trips to Australia, you've been around the zoos, you've been around like Liam Wilson, you've been around um, Sam Goodman, you've been around the Maloney's, you've, you've seen what they're doing. Sam came over uh, for, for Tim's fight and I had an opportunity to get in the ring with them and catch miss with them. Yep. Um, something that I don't really like to do, but I've started training kids back home just trying to, you know, help back home and uh, Sam came over I had an opportunity to work with him a little bit in the ring and he's 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 a dynamite kid yeah. and he's a dynamite athlete and uh, he's he's really talented and confident yep. and um, he's got some of the same qualities I see a lot of the fighters from Australia have yeah. that confidence and almost that sense of I can't be beaten we all have that but you the energy is a little bit different with you guys from Australia so yeah. I love that about him and um, NUA is a monster. He yeah. is the monster. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Uh, but I yeah. certainly will be rooting for Sam, man. Yeah. I, I just love him. Yeah, he lives yeah. just around the corner from me, so awesome. uh, it is nice to. Uh, I'm stalking him, all right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Find out you're stalking him. I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to come back, all yeah, right? That's all right. You leave my guy yeah. alone. I, I was just trying guy. to be a Port Away <laughs> podcast uh, on, on the scene, you know what yeah. I mean? Here you go. Speaking you go. of, make sure you do subscribe to the Port Away podcast. Please. He's normally rocking the shirt, but yeah, not today. Not or today. the hat, one of the two. Yeah. But uh, and while you're there, Thank for you, Punch man. Podcast, subscribe to that as well. Always great catching up with the two time world champion. 
Sean Porter. I appreciate you, sir.